I'm Christy Clemente from HR Planning and Performance Management Section. Welcome to today's uh, discussion on the DSWB Strategic Performance Management System. Pursuant to the CSC Memorandum Circular Number 6, Series of 2012, or the Strategic Performance Management System, which mandates the establishment of performance evaluation strategy uh, in all departments and agencies, um, the DSWP has established the Strategic Performance Management System. Uh, the DSPMS is focused on linking individual performance uh, with the agency's vision, mission, and organizational objective. It is a technology composed of strategies uh, methods and uh, tools to ensure the fulfillment of functions of the office and its personnel, uh, as well as assess their accomplishments. Uh, in compliance to Civil Service Memorandum Circular Number no. Six, uh, Series of 2012, uh, the SWD submitted an Administrative Order Number no. Eleven, uh, Series of 2015, to Civil Service. Um, NCR. And as a result of the evaluation, um, the SWB has complied substantially with the CSC Memorandum Number no. 6 um, series of 2012, uh, but needs some refinement. So here are the basis for the revision of the administrative order. Uh, number one, there is no office order. Uh, issued by the head of the agency constituting the performance uh, management team. Number two, uh, there is no provision in the DSWD SPMS guidelines um, which provide that the average rating of the individual staff should go higher uh, than the collective performance of the office. Uh, number three, there is no separate and clear standards to measure quality, effectiveness, and timeliness. Uh, there is also no SPMS calendar uh, submitted which contains the activities and uh, the timeline for each uh, phase of the four stages of the SPMS cycle. Under the SPMS guidelines, uh, individual performance should be rated uh, solely on the accomplishment of work outputs uh, and should be treated independently um, from behavioral dimensions. Hence, attendance to blood ceremony should not be included in the um, computation of the individual performance rating. Then, another is uh, the grant of PID and the PDIS should be deleted on the, on the SPM, SPMS since incentives are governed by the GAA and Executive Number 80, uh, Series of 2012. With regards to the coverage of the DSPMS, um, the same may be applied uh, to those hired under contract of service and uh, job orders whose renewal of contracts um, shall be based on performance. However, uh, they should not be uh, included uh, for the ranking uh, for the purpose of granting PDB and other performance-based incentives. Okay, so here are the legal basis of the uh, DSWD uh, SPMS. Uh, the first one is the rule 10 of the Omnibus Rules uh, Implementing Group of Executive Order Number 219, Series of 1987. Then the joint resolution of uh, the Senate and the House of Representatives, number four, series of 2008. The administrative order number 25, series of 2011. And the civil service uh, memorandum circular number six, series of 2012, or the strategic performance management system. Okay, so let's proceed to the performance management cycle. The DSWD SPMS follows the performance management cycle, which has four phases. Number one is the performance planning and commitment. Uh, number two, the performance monitoring and coaching. 
Number three, performance review and evaluation. And number four is the performance rewarding and development planning. Okay, so for performance planning and commitment, uh, it is a planning process uh, which is facilitated through a consultative approach. The planning process begins uh, with a review of the department's um, external and internal context as well as ensuring that uh, DSWD plans are anchored uh, on the pertinent international and national commitments of the department uh, or agency. Levels of planning then follow to ensure effective cascading of performance commitment and targets. So, um, start from the department, going down to the field office, and then uh, to the individual. Um, individual performance contracting process. So, this is the baseline process of the individual performance management. Uh, from the approved um, OPCs and uh, BPCs, uh, performance uh, targets are cascaded to the individual staff uh, through preparation of um, the IPC. Uh, the IPCs highlight the um, per personnel um, mission critical outputs uh, to be delivered according to their roles and functions. So there are four elements of IPC. Uh, number one is the result area, uh, the rate allocation, uh, performance indicator, and then the rating period. Uh, Two result area, uh, these are the general uh, scopes wherein the specific mission critical output belongs. And then, um, so also the specific aspect of operations uh, from which the individual uh, or division is accountable for. Okay. Uh, in identifying the key result area, um, this includes um, tasks in our uh, job functions and other mandates of the department. This is, these are also the special assignments um, outside the regular function that may contribute uh, to the office goal or target, or which is what we call uh, the support Task. Weight allocation. Uh, it refers to the distribution of weights uh, reflected to the strategic value uh, of results in support to the achievement of office uh, or division goals. Things to consider in prioritizing the result. Uh, is the result essential uh, to the achievement of office goals? Or um, is a result a primary or a sole accountability of the individual or uh, his position? Is the result contributing to the improvements in the office uh, and staff capacity to achieve its goals? So this includes identifying the strategic priorities in all functions and the support uh, services. There are three um, performance indicators in our IPC. We have the quantity. Uh, the quality and the timeliness. Uh, so for quant uh, quantity, it refers to the target of a uh, percentage of accomplishment. It measures uh, whether targets are accomplished with minimum amount. Uh, for quality, uh, it refers to the specific standard of accomplishment. Uh, it is the degree to which the objectives are achieved and the extent to which uh, targeted problems are solved. For timeliness, um, it is the turnaround time uh, of accomplishing or delivering results uh, to target clients. Uh, it measures whether the deliverable uh, was done based on the requirement of the law uh, and or need of clients and stockholders. So let me show with you uh, the same uh, application from uh, Peter Draper, uh, which states that uh, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So this means that uh, you'll never know whether you're successful or not uh, unless uh, success is uh, defined and tracked. So with a clearly uh, 
establish a uh, metrical success, you can quantify progress and uh, adjust your uh, process to produce the desired outcomes. Uh, without your autocutes, you're stuck in a constant state of pressing. Okay, rating period. So this is the identification of the specific uh, period of time uh, which the individual of the deliver uh, the peer result areas. So um, this uh, refers to the period January to June or July to December. Uh, here is the example of an as you can see. Uh, we have the period for each your name, position, and the name of the office. Then uh, we have the uh, result area, uh, weight allocation, and uh, the performance of the paper. For performance uh, monitoring and coaching, uh, during the monitoring stage, uh, checkpoints are conducted to identify uh, the least deliverables uh, and their plan activities uh, to address the delay uh, in the attainment of uh, the commitments. So, uh, the supervisor plays a critical role at this stage. So, their focus um, is on the critical function of a supervisor or uh, a manager uh, to provide intervention uh, to improve uh, the performance of the team uh, or an individual to develop uh, potentials. So, uh, the supervisor shall consider uh, empowerment principle. Uh, in order to uh, motivate uh, in the achievement of uh, the performance results. So this can be facilitated uh, through regular meetings, one-on-one uh, -on -one discussions, and the review of uh, pertinent documents. For um, performance review and evaluation, so uh, in this stage, the accomplishments are assessed uh, based on the Attainment of accomplishment uh, identified during the planning process. So, uh, for IPCR, the immediate supervisor or the division um, shall assess uh, individual employee uh, performance uh, based on the commitment uh, indicated uh, during the beginning of the uh, rating period. So, um, the performance uh, rating shall be based on the uh, record of accomplishments and should be supported by uh, reports, uh, documentations, or any output uh, as a proof of uh, actual performance. Um, here are uh, the elements of the IPCR. So we have the uh, uh, result area, the location, uh, success indicators, uh, the actual accomplishments, uh, the rating, uh, and then the remarks. Okay, so here is an example of the IPCR. As you can see, uh, we have the uh, rating period, uh, the name, the position, then uh, rate allocation, success indicators or the performance indicators, uh, actual accomplishment, uh, final rating, and uh, then the remarks. So uh, for final rating, a uh, five-point rating scale uh, shall be used we define as the highest and once the lowest. Uh, the final performance uh, rating assessment shall correspond to the objective uh, description of uh, outstanding, very satisfactory, satisfactory, um, unsatisfactory, and uh, poor. Okay, so for rating criteria, uh, we have uh, the quantity, quality, and timeliness. Um, so we have a typical uh, for uh, computing the quantity. So, um, as indicated, uh, so uh, quantity can be classified uh, under fixed quantity, uh, ANA, or the length fixed, and then the uh, order based quantity. So, uh, we have a corresponding uh, rating for uh, depending on the uh, percentage of accomplishment. Uh, for the quality, uh, it seems uh, quality measures are nuanced in nature. So, uh, the specific rating uh, must be agreed uh, by the rater and the MP. 
also for uh, timeliness. Uh, we have also a table here uh, in computing um, for timeliness. So uh, we have for uh, fixed or the Anna and then uh, for the non fixed or uh, the properties. Uh, performance rewarding and development planning. So, um, part of the individual uh, employee's evaluation uh, is the competency assessment uh, is a piece of the competency requirement of the job. So, uh, the result of the assessment uh, should be discussed with the supervisor to the uh, staff at the end of the rating period. So, this, the discussion shall focus on a strength uh, competency related uh, performance gap uh, and there are uh, opportunities to address uh, those gaps very path and over use. So uh, the result of the competency assessment uh, shall be treated independently of the performance rating of the employee. So appropriate uh, developmental intervention shall be made available uh, by the supervisor uh, in coordination with the uh, uh, HR and uh, mindful of the uh, employee's individual uh, circumstance, uh, enabling him or her uh, to contribute more full uh, in achieving uh, the uh, agency's uh, performance result. So the results of the performance evaluation shall serve as inputs. Uh, in identifying and providing the kind of intervention uh, needed based on the developmental needs identified. Uh, it's also uh, an input in facilitating and uh, coordinating developmental interventions uh, that will form part of the HR plan and the basis for um, incentives and rewards. Then, um, will serve as input to the office place uh, committee in Identifying uh, potential praise award nominees for various awards categories and um, for PMP in determining uh, top performance of the agency to qualify for awards and SMP. So, for appeal, um, it is an, an individual or a group or dissatisfied with the final performance rating. Um, he or she can appeal to the regional performance management team uh, within 10 days from the date of receipt of uh, or notice of uh, her final rating. Uh, an office or individual employee, however, shall not be allowed to protest the performance ratings of other uh, offices or co employees. So, an employee is required to submit an IPCR at the end of the rating period. Uh, unless specified and accepted by the uh, RPMP, uh, no submission of the IPCR to HRMPP within the specified dates uh, shall be a ground uh, for the employee's disqualifications uh, to performance based personal actions uh, such as promotion, training, uh, scholarship, and grants of. of performance, uh, enhancement, bonus. So, um, failure to submit or uh, delay for the IPCR uh, would also be a ground for an um, administrative sanction uh, for violation of reasonable uh, office rules and regulations. And uh, failure of the, uh, on the part of the supervisor to inform or notify his Subordinates so um, for the unsatisfactory and or poor or poor performance during the rating period shall be a ground uh, for an administrative uh, offense for neglect 